Okay. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to brunch. I'm Chef Candice, and I really appreciate you all joining me today, uh, this morning or afternoon, depending on what time it is in your time zone. Uh, over here, it's 10 a.m. With uh, Safer at Home, I actually had to set an alarm to get up at this time, because normally I'm rolling out of bed at this time, because of Safer at Home, my internal clock is all mixed up. So before we get started, I'm going to make sure that everybody's muted. Uh, we will have a chance at the end for you to participate. In the meantime, feel free to submit questions or comments or anything via chat. I have another computer set up behind you so that I can see if you're submitting any questions. So give me one second. Let me make sure everybody's muted and then we will move on. Great. So today what we're going to cover is French toast and a rolled omelet. If you've never made a rolled omelet, it sounds a lot more difficult than it is. I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible for you to follow on, follow along with me. Uh, some things that we're going to need today. Give me one second. Some things you're going to need today are your nonstick pans. We're going to need two nonstick pans. You're going to need a tray for submerging your French toast, as well as your ingredients. I think you were sent an ingredient list beforehand, so make sure you have your ingredients prepped. I also will read through what we need as we go along. You're going to need either a whisk or two forks. Um, you're going to need a nonstick spatula. This is very, very important that it's nonstick for your rolled omelet. If you don't have a nonstick spatula, you might end up with scrambled eggs instead of an omelet. So not that that's a big problem. You're going to need it anyway. So if you want to have the same product that I do, you're definitely going to need this nonstick spatula and tongs. If you don't have tongs, you can always do it with a fork, and that's just to flip your French toast and pull it off of the plate. So again, thank you so much for joining me. I know we're all kind of uh, running out of things to do at home. I am. I probably assume that you are too. So it's great that uh, Koku Social has offered us this beautiful venue to get together over food and learn how to make delicious food. Um, as a chef in Los Angeles, you can imagine that I am uh, fun employed right now. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm at home, find creative ways to make food and creative ways to use new ingredients. I'm a private chef here in Los Angeles. A private chef, what does that mean? I do in-home meal preps. I do private events for small events, such as one-on-one -on -one dinners, uh, romantic, romantic dinners at home. Sometimes I do events at Airbnbs for people who are traveling. I also do um, cooking classes. I do one-on-one -on -one cooking classes. I also do cooking classes with Poku Social which is the venue that we are on right now. If you've never heard of Koku Social or used Koku Social before, they are an online platform and what they do is they provide uh, affordable classes for you. And they also work with local venues and chefs like myself to make it a mutually beneficial program for everyone. <laughs> I see some comments on there, thank you. Um, so what I do is uh, when we're back, in normal life, what I do is I do ravioli cooking. So I make ravioli from scratch at a venue here in Eagle Rock. It's called Pie and Co. Once we get back to normal, if you're in Los Angeles, I hope you'll join me making ravioli classes. And if you're not in Los Angeles, definitely check out Koku Social and see what venues are near you that they hold classes. They hold a variety of classes. They do uh, ravioli making. I've seen um, they do macarons, they do a whole bunch of stuff. So figure, just figure out your local venues and definitely check it out. In the meantime, if you want to support local venues and chefs like myself, feel free to buy gift cards. Koku Social offers gift cards on their website and you can uh, purchase them now and use them later once we're all released from Safer at Home. So now we're going to get started. The first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to make sure that you guys all have a, a second to just get all your ingredients prepped, and then I'm going to go through all the ingredients with you. And you're on a stand here, so 
you might be moving a little bit with me. If you get dizzy, just close your eyes as I move my camera around. So the first thing that we're gonna make is the French toast. And the reason that we're gonna do the French toast first is because it takes longer to cook than the omelet. And since we want both things to come out at the same time, I'm gonna do the French toast first, and then we're gonna do the omelet. And then ideally, they'll both be done at the same time. And then you can have a nice warm, warm dish with warm French toast and warm omelet at the same time. So the first thing that we're gonna work on is our French toast. You can see I have my notes here. So it looks like I'm talking at the wall because I'm reading my notes. So the first thing that we're gonna need for our French toast is one egg. And I have my egg prepped here. Perfect. And then we are also going to need a tablespoon of vanilla. If you don't have vanilla, um, you don't have to use it. I like to use it. You could also get creative if you have coconut extract or any type of other extract. The only thing I don't recommend is don't use peppermint as extract because it's going to taste a little fun. So we're going to do a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Before we do that, I'm going to ask you to um, whisk your egg with your fork. So we're going to whisk our egg. And you want to get it very, very combined. So you don't want to really be seeing any white or yellow separated. You want it to be all one pill pink color. So I'll give that a good whisk. And then give me one second, I realize I'm missing, oh, here we go. The measuring spoon. So then we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract to your egg mix. There we go. So one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and I will lower you down so that you can see what I'm doing instead of seeing my face. So one teaspoon of vanilla extract, And then we're gonna do two tablespoons of sugar. I already have mine measured out, so two tablespoons of sugar. Some notes for the sugar. If you're using a sweeter bread, like Hawaiian bread or something like cinnamon toast, anything that already has sugar in it, you might wanna use a little bit less sugar because it will end up being very, very sweet towards the end. Also keep in mind, if you like syrup, that also has a lot of sugar in it also, so use as much sugar as you feel comfortable using. If you're using something like whole wheat bread, you might wanna crank up the sugar to combat that wheat flavor from your bread. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my sugar. And I'm using a small bowl like this. If you're using a big mixing bowl, feel free. Um, I'm, used to, um, I'm used to doing this a lot, so I'm not gonna fly everywhere, but if you're not that comfortable, definitely use a bigger bread. So I'm gonna stop for one second because I have a couple questions here that I'm going to address. You can use agave for sugar. You can use anything, you can use honey. Um, if you have only have maple syrup, use maple syrup instead of sugar. What you're trying to do is just add sweetness to your mix. So don't worry if you don't have exactly sugar. In a pinch, I've even used uh, powdered sugar. So use what you have and it'll taste good in the end. And yes, if you're using whole wheat bread, I would use a little bit more sugar because the whole wheat on its own is just not sweet and you kind of want to combat that. So I'm going to keep stirring this together. And then I also have one fourth cup of milk. If you don't have milk, you can use coconut milk. You can use, um, what else have I used? You can use creamer if you have creamer. Whatever you count as milk or your version of milk, use that. Perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one half teaspoon of cinnamon. One half teaspoon of cinnamon into my egg mix. And now I'm going to add a fourth 
teaspoon of ginger. Not everyone uses ginger all the time. I like it because it gives it a different flavor profile than you're used to. So I'm gonna do one fourth teaspoon of ginger. The recipe also calls for one fourth teaspoon of nutmeg. I unfortunately don't have that right now because of, you know the limitations that we're having in finding ingredients. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip that. If you do have nutmeg, go ahead and add one fourth teaspoon of nutmeg in there. So I'm going to go ahead and keep stirring this here. You can see here's where a bigger bowl would be a lot more useful. If you're using fresh ginger, I just had this question come through. Use an eighth teaspoon of ginger. Uh, you don't want to overpower your dish. And uh, fresh ginger is a lot spicier than ground ginger, and it's a lot more potent. So definitely, if you're going to use fresh versus dried, use half. Okay, so here is my container. This is a flat bottom, and this is what I'm gonna use to soak my bread in. If you don't have this, or you don't wanna get a bunch of dishes dirty, you can go ahead and just add this to whatever you're using to make your mix. Obviously, it has to be big enough to hold your bread, so keep that in mind. And when you're using bread, the recipe calls for a thicker sliced bread. When you go to a restaurant, you'll be using things like um, flour bread or just a thicker slice of bread because most of us are at home and I doubt most of you have, you know, those luxury baker's breads at home. It's okay to use sliced bread and it's even okay to use the ends of your bread. Right now would probably the, be the best way to make use of your ends of your bread and using it for fresh toast because you're gonna soak it in with all those delicious sugar and cinnamon and all that. So you won't even notice this, uh, this side over here. So I'm just using the end of the regular white loaf of bread. And I'm gonna lower you back down so you can see what's going on again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, add our egg mixture over the top of my French toast. I'm also going to pour in my milk. If you have a bigger bowl, you can add your milk to your mixture here. So perfect. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my fork here to kind of just stir this together and just make sure that it's soaking. If you're using a thin piece of bread, Keep in mind, it doesn't have to soak that long because it's gonna absorb it a lot faster than a thicker slice of bread. So the reason we're soaking this is we want the batter to get inside of the bread, but we don't want it so that when you pull it out, the bread is disintegrating. You want it to be sturdy enough that it'll hold on your fork like this, but not where it's gonna fall apart because then it's not gonna ever get uh, nice and cooked the way that you're used to fresh toast. So you can see mine's already getting a little soggy. So I'm gonna pull this out of here. If you're using a thicker slice of bread, like this or anything like that, you're definitely gonna to wanna to have your soaking longer than this. So I'm gonna pull mine out and I'm just gonna hold it to the side. Now this batter here, don't throw this out. You can use this. Uh, right now we're practicing no food waste. I doubt you wanna to go to the grocery store and buy more eggs. So don't throw this away, put this in a deli cup or whatever kind of food container that you have. And you can use this for uh, oatmeal. So what I do with this is I make oatmeal the way that you normally make oatmeal. I don't put any sugar or any seasoning in it. And I just slowly, once it starts cooking, I slowly start stirring this in there. And then you kind of have French toast oatmeal. You could also, um, if you're gonna make a custard or some type of pudding, you could consider using this as well. So I'm gonna put this off to the side but I'm not gonna throw it away. Give me one second. Perfect, so now that you have your egg sitting, I'm going to, I'm sorry, your bread sitting. I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side and I'm gonna see if anybody has any questions at this point. Feel free to put them in the chat. I'm gonna take a minute just to look. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any, uh, encountered any difficulties while you're doing this, let me know and we'll, we'll work on it together. Perfect. So 
I think everyone hopefully is feeling comfortable and confident in getting to this point. Now we are going to work on our, on our, our omelet prep. So I'm gonna lower you again so you can see what I'm doing. So I have the recipe itself that was sent to you uh, requires three eggs. Because I'm running low on eggs, and I assume many of you are running low on eggs, I'm only gonna use two. So definitely use two eggs, no more, no less than two, because then you will get where we need to go. So you can, you can substitute two instead of three eggs. I'm also going to use um, cream cheese. So the recipe calls for any type of cheese that you like, uh, shredded cheese or sliced cheese. I'm gonna use cream cheese because I opened a packet of cream cheese the other day, and I don't want this to go bad, so I'm gonna put it into my omelet today. And I'm also going to use diced onions, red onions as my vegetable. Why am I using diced red onions? Again, like my cream cheese, I have this lying around. I don't want it to go in the trash. So it's gonna end up in my omelet today. And you're welcome to use the same, whatever vegetables you have lying around. If you're gonna use vegetables, make sure you have a little bit of a small dice like this so that it cooks in your omelet. If you have bigger chunks and you don't feel like, you know, sauteing it or putting it in a pan, you can always put it in the microwave for a minute, cook it down and toss it into your omelet. So now that we've discussed that, oh, some other things you're gonna need, butter. Butter makes everything better. So definitely gonna need a lot, a lot of butter for your omelet so that it comes out really nice and beautiful. And then I'm also gonna have a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. If you want to be super fancy with your omelet, you can use white pepper and that'll make sure you don't have like black specks in your omelet and it'll look nice and clean. I don't have white pepper, so we're going to use black pepper and I assume most of you don't have white pepper either. And then at the end, I'm going to garnish with um, some diced, some minced cilantro. Again, why am I using cilantro? It's what I have in my kitchen. If you don't have herbs like this, don't worry about it. It's not super crucial. It's just more for a finishing touch when you're plating. Great, so let's get started. And I'm gonna lower you again. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add my eggs to my bowl. And then I'm gonna use my other fork or my whisk. And I'm gonna whisk this for about a minute. And you wanna whisk this very, 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 very hard because you want it to be all combined together. This is very important for your omelet. So make sure you give it a really good whisk. And mine's gonna take a little bit less time than yours and that's just like, I do this all the time and it comes together faster. So don't worry if it takes you a little bit longer than myself. And I have another question here while I'm doing this. And yes, you can use sourdough for making French toast. Um, I've used it many times, it's actually pretty delicious. So give your eggs a good whisk. So you can see it's kind of all come together. There's really no separation between the egg white and the egg yellow. You want it all to be one, one material here because this is the color that you want your omelet to come out. And then I'm gonna divide two tablespoons of butter. If you did not know this, some people don't know this, the measurements are usually on the side of your butter. So just dice it there. Perfect. So I'm going to do two tablespoons of butter. And I'm going to cut these two tablespoons in half. And I would do the same. It'll make sense later, I promise. And I'm also gonna cut just one tablespoon for my French toast. So I'll keep that aside here. And to my egg mixture, I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt. Salt is up to you, however salty or less salty you like it. If you don't wanna add salt, don't add salt. And I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper. And just twist that together. Perfect. 
I am using unsalted butter. If you are using salted butter, keep that in mind when you're adding salt to your egg mixture and just factor that in when you're adding your seasoning. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move you over to my stove. So if you get busy, close your eyes for a second. I'm gonna move you over to my stove and then we're gonna work on cooking. These next few steps are gonna go very, very quickly. So in order to make sure that we're all on the same page, I'm just gonna give you a quick description of what I'm gonna do, and then we're gonna get started on it. So I'm bringing my eggs over. I'm gonna turn on both pans. So I'm using my front burner and my back burner. A quick note about these type of pans. You wanna use a nonstick pan for both. If you don't have a nonstick pan or you only have one nonstick pan, use the nonstick pan for your omelet. Don't use it for your French toast, but definitely try to use nonsticks for both. If you have an older nonstick, I think you can kind of see here, this one's got like, it's some wear and tear. This is probably my first nonstick that I've ever purchased. I'm not gonna use this for my omelet. And the reason is because the nonstick over time wears out. And the purpose of the nonstick is to be nonstick. And once it starts wearing out, those nonstick factors start wearing out as well. And to get a really nice rolled omelet, you need this to be very pristine. As you see here, this one's got no nicks. See if I can catch it on the light. No nicks, no cuts. This is my omelet pan. This is my French toast pan. So I'm gonna put both of these on medium heat. And I'm going to put my French toast on the back burner first because it's going to end up sitting there while you're making your omelet. So give me one second. I'm going to move all of my ingredients over to the stove, check on your questions, and then we'll get started. So these have started warming up. If you are using fresh vegetables like mushrooms, definitely I would put them in a separate pan and just give them a quick saute to get the liquid out. If you don't feel like doing that, you can always nuke them, put them in the microwave for about a minute. It's fast, it's easy, probably not what you would do in a restaurant, but we're all at home and we're just trying to keep this as easy as possible. So the first thing I'm gonna work on is my French toast. I'm gonna to lower you so that you can see what I'm doing. Again, instead of seeing my face. So here's my back burner one. I'm gonna add just a tablespoon of butter in there and swirl it around like this. This is gonna be for our French toast. Do you see how it's sizzling? But it's not browning. So we don't want browned butter. Although browned butter is delicious, we're not using that for this this morning. Perfect. So I'm going to take that one tablespoon of butter and put it in this pan here. And do the same here. And I'm just going to swirl this around like this. I'm going to take this pan off of the heat while we work on our French toast. So my French toast pan is at a medium. You could lower it a little bit more if you'd like between medium and low. And then I'm going to just slide this in here and I'm gonna to toast each side for about two minutes. If you're using thicker slices of bread, you're gonna to have to adjust your time. If you're using a very thick slice of bread, it might take up to even five to six minutes on each side. The purpose of this toasting is not only to get a nice beautiful brown on each side, but also to cook it all the way through. Because remember you're using raw egg and you wanna make sure that it's cooked all the way through so that when you cut into it, it's not raw egg in the pan. So while this French toast is toasting for about a minute or two, I'm gonna get started on my omelet. Again, I'm gonna to explain to you what we're gonna do first, because this omelet, it's gonna go really, really fast. 
So I'm going to explain it to you first, see if you have any questions, and then we're actually going to do it. So the point of this butter, the reason we have butter is because we want the egg to not stick at all to the pan. We want it eventually to just slide out and be beautiful and rolled. So I have tons of butter in here. You can see extra. Once the pan is nice and hot, I'm going to pour in my eggs mixture. And once the egg mixture gets into the pan, I'm going to use my nonstick spatula. And I'm basically going to scramble it with my nonstick spatula. Why are we doing that? Because we want to make sure that no parts of the egg stick to the pan too long. Because with a rolled omelet, what you want at the end is just a really, really pale yellow. You want it all to be pale yellow. It's not like the omelets you're used to at a restaurant that have the caramelization on each side. Oh, those are, those are delicious. That's not what we're doing here today. So once you get the eggs in there, you're going to scramble them really, really fast. And just try to make sure that not, no part of the egg is touching the pan for too long. And then once it starts looking like, like it's about to set, so it's still a little bit runny, but it looks like it's about to start cooking. You're gonna use your spatula and just flatten it out and kind of put all of the um, gooey parts on the pan. And then we're gonna turn off the heat, add our mixture, our vegetables, our cheese in the center. And then we're going to roll it. And that's gonna involve tilting your pan, starting at one end, and you, you guessed it, just rolling it forward till it gets the edge. And then you're just gonna flip it onto a plate. So definitely have a plate ready for serving at the end. Cool. So let's get started on our omelet. If you have a thinner piece of toast, right about now is going to want to be when you're going to start flipping it. So let me grab another fork. And just check your other side. You see how mine's starting to get golden on this side? So I'm gonna flip it. If you're using a bigger piece of bread, definitely give it about another minute or so. You just want a beautiful crust like that. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay, let's get started on our omelet. Any questions before we get started? Awesome. So I'm turning this up again to medium heat, medium exactly medium on mine. We're just gonna get it really nice and hot. Give your eggs another whisk. And then we're gonna go ahead and pour this in here. And have your nonstick spatula in hand and ready. This is gonna go fast. So get ready, take a little drink of your drink and let's get going. If you've not cooked your veggies already, I would saute them in a pan right now or put them in the microwave right now. The reason I'm not sauteing my veggies is because I'm using just really small diced onions and the residual heat from the omelet is going to cook it. If you have bigger pieces than this, put in the microwave for 30, 45 seconds while you make your omelet and then we'll toss it in. So now I'm going to go ahead and add in my eggs. And using my spatula, I'm going to start stirring this and just moving this around to make sure that no pieces are touching the pan for too long. And it kind of looks like you're making scrambled eggs. You can see here they're still a little bit runny, but they're starting to hold. So I'm going to use my spatula. Kind of make a little pancake out of this. Get it nice and flat. I'm also going to turn my heat off. I'm going to add in my onions. I'm going to add in my cream cheese or whatever cheese you're using and kind of get this towards the center here. You want it to be in the center so that when you roll it, it's all in the center and fill. And now I'm going to turn my French toast off. Again, if you're using a thicker piece of bread, keep this going for a little bit longer. 
And now comes the rolling part. And I'm going to put my plate on this side of the stove because this side of the stove is not hot. Don't put your plate on the heat of your stove. This could explode. So I'm just going to tilt my pan like this at a weird angle. And I'm going to start flipping it forward. If you have any part stuck, you could also add a little bit of butter here on this side. And as you're tilting it, it'll help you take it off. So you can see how it flipped out like this. Mine has a little bit of caramelization on it, and that's just because. I was explaining to you guys, so it took it a little bit longer in the pan than I wanted it to, but it's still working. You can use your hands or you can use your spatula. Just tuck all this in. You can even tuck in the edges, kind of like a burrito style. And there you go. I'm gonna show you how to clean this up. So I have a little napkin. I'm just gonna go through and just wipe the edges. This is what they do in restaurants. That's how you get really beautiful, nice, clean plates. So like that. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of cilantro over the top. Like that. If you don't have fine herbs like this, don't worry about it. You could also do a little bit of a sprinkle of paprika, a sprinkle of pepper, basically whatever you have on hand. And now I'm going to plate my French toast. So there's my French toast. And this is still a little bit warm, but I'm going to show you how to plate it like they do in a restaurant. So let me. Move you back over to my other side and we'll discuss plating. I'm going to go ahead and move you guys so don't get dizzy. So here is my French toast. I'm going to leave it whole like this. You can see the other side is also really pretty. So, whichever side you prefer. At a restaurant, you pick whatever side looks the best, and that's the one that you display to your crowd. And then if you don't have powdered sugar, don't worry about it. I'm just gonna show you some techniques for plating. So I have powdered sugar in a sifter here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just tap this, and boom, looks gorgeous. I also have a strawberry here. You don't have a strawberry, you could use a tablespoon of jam. You could use mango, I've used that before. So I'm gonna cut the edge off of my strawberry. Do this on a cutting board, don't do this the way that I'm doing this. I do this all the time. So I have a lot of experience with this type of knife. Do this on a cutting board. So basically what you wanna do is just cut slivers into your strawberry as far down as you can, and then you fan it out like a deck of cards like this. And boom, look at that. If you had whipped cream, you would do whipped cream in the center and then put the strawberry on top. When you're doing plating for pictures or you wanna be fancy, what you wanna think about is how you want negative space, you see how this all this white space around here, negative space, and you want height. So if you have whipped cream, you want to do a big mound of whipped cream and then strawberry on top because you want it to just basically emerge from the plate. So we have that. We have our omelet here. Look at that. Feels like you're at a restaurant. And again, if you don't have strawberries, use jam. Use, you know, blueberry jam whatever kind of jam you have and just put a dollop on top. Or if you want to get fancy, you have a little bit of whipped cream and a little bit of jam, mix them together. You'll have a really beautiful cream on top. And then I'm going to show you my omelet when I open it up. 
So you can see here, look at that. My cheese all cooked all the way through. Great. So that's how we play. You can add this with bacon. You can do sausage. You can eat it like this. Um, eat it with your hands, eat it with a fork, however you like. I'm going to open this up for you. I'm going to let you guys send any questions, get any, any submissions, anything that you want. Before I open you all up, I'm going to just say thank you again for joining with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Please check out Koku Social uh, on near you or in LA. Come take classes with me or other brilliant chefs. Buy gift cards if you are willing or you are able to. I know we're all in different financial situations. So please do uh, gift cards. Check me out on Instagram. I'm Chef Candace with an I, not an A, Chef Candace. And hopefully you'll see me on Kogu Social more often. So give me one second. I'm going to get real close so that I can unmute you all. I don't know. Beverly Walgreens? Okay. So no. any questions? Want to show their pictures? Just got it. I'm going to meet you all again. <laughs> okay, I have a question here. My omelet is a little bit liquidy coming out. Okay, so the, the thing with a rolled omelet is it's going to be a little bit gooey in the center. And that's just the technique of a rolled omelet. That's why I don't recommend if you're immunocompromised or you can't eat raw stuff. I wouldn't recommend eating um, this because you, you will have a little bit of raw in there. If you don't like that raw, just pop it in the microwave for 30 seconds, 20 seconds. It'll finish cooking through. But some people will eat it this way because some people like that little bit uncooked. And again, I had a suggestion. Unmute your, you're welcome to unmute yourself if you want to talk. That way I don't catch any of you off guard <laughs> middle conversation. Perfect. And then if you're not going to eat your omelet right now, you can put this in the fridge, toast up some bread later, have an omelet sandwich. You end up making a ton of French toast and people don't eat it. You can wait until it gets a little bit hard, grind it up, puree it with um, some ice cream, you know, some French toast um, smoothies, French toast, whatever. It's right now because of quarantine and safer at home. There's no rules in the kitchen. Get creative. Just avoid throwing food in the trash. That's my number one rule. So find new ways to do it. I'm on, I'm on Instagram. If you find yourself in a situation where you don't know what to do with an ingredient or you don't know what to do with leftovers, send me a message on Instagram. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Perfect. So thank you again, everyone, for joining me. I will leave this up for a few more minutes while I clean up to see if anybody has any questions. You can jump off whenever you want to. Please post pictures on Instagram and, and tag me, Chef Candace, and Koku Social. Cheers. Okay, I'm going to sign off. Thank you again so much. See you next time.